This is a uh, tactile sculpture. It is not carved so much as I just smoothed off the uh, rough edges. And uh, so the, <coughs> the lines of uh, that you see through this are the uh, planes of cleavage and uh, the different directions show you different planes of cleavage and there's some that are pretty predominant and they stay and they, they line up with the little bits and pieces of this rock that um, <coughs> that formed, and that's what makes the crystal the shape it is. This stuff forms that they call it rose quartz, okay? Uh, but it, it's not quartz because quartz a doesn't have the uh, planes of cleavage. Okay, it can't have planes of cleavage um, because it's a chemical reaction type thing, right? And silicon dioxide doesn't do that. This does it. This is carbon. And carbon does it because all the carbon atoms are the same size and they line up in perfect little rows and columns. Mm -hmm. uh, and that creates planes of cleavage. <laughs> and, and it's also very light. When you pick up a rock, uh, for instance, I, I've got a, a rather large ruby here, okay? And, and this sucker is heavy, man. <laughs> it's like if somebody clunked you over the head with this, you would uh, be out skied, man. I, it, it's big, and it's not big. It's dense and heavy, heavy, heavy. Right? This weighs about a half of what you expect a rock to weigh, okay? because it's just carbon. Carbon is the sixth element in the periodic table. It's very light. It doesn't weigh anything. When you put a whole bunch of it together, it still doesn't weigh very much because there's only six protons and six electrons. And they all line up in perfect little rows and columns in this way cool crystal. And these these things, these rose quartz, they're massive, right? They're, 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 I mean, this is a piece of a big uh, vein of, of what they call quartz. Um, in the side of a mountain. Somebody dug this out. And it was a vein. And when you're driving down the road, you know, through the mountains, and you see those big white veins of quartz, that's what you're seeing, this stuff. I say that's what it is. It's not quartz, man. <laughs> but... But you know what? See, my problem is I don't know anything. I'm, I'm, I gotta go look and measure things, right? I and when you measure this, you find out what it is. First of all, quartz doesn't have those. Uh, the very obvious uh, uh, planes of cleavage 
Um, it does not. Quartz does not have planes of cleavage. Period. Uh, I mean, it, quartz is one of it's it's ubiquitous, right? It, it's everywhere, and so we use quartz as kind of uh, uh, the the rock that you can uh, um, relate everything else to, because everybody knows what quartz is. Everybody knows what quartz is. Except, except they don't, really. See? Because not everything that has six sides and is clear is quartz. This is not quartz. Oh, well, A, because it has planes of cleavage. <laughs> it, it has planes of cleavage, and quartz only has sideways striations, it, it, horizontal striations on its long axis. Okay? So the long axis goes the long way here, right? And, and you can see there's some horizontal striations there, sure enough. Well, if I could get this son of a bitch to focus, it's really clear, okay? And, and my camera has a hard time focusing on it. It's so damn clear. And you can see those sideways striations, but there's other ones, too. See? And, and quartz doesn't do that. Quartz doesn't have... Actually, these are little squares. When you, when you get it close, when you look at the, at the side of the crystal, what you see is that it's little squares because this is hexagonal the long way, but cubic the short way. Uh, Close-packed cubic is exactly the same as close-packed hexagonal, and they are, in fact, the same thing. And so this is both. It, it's a diamond crystal that has six sides. It is not hexagonal. Or, well, at least it's not uh, like quartz. Quartz is actually trigonal, okay? Uh, and, and I had one here uh, not long ago. Some of these are, uh, and they only have three sides. When you look down this long axis, they, they, they've got to, th like a, they're built like a, like a triangle. And, and kind of triangle with squared off sides, maybe. Um, some of these are, are squares, some of these are rectangles, because the, the crystal makes a form the, out of the available carbon in the environment. I don't know how these are made, man. You know what? I just figured out how much of the stuff we've been calling quartz isn't quartz. It's not. It's not hexagonal, is it? No, it's kind of got that free side thing that I was just talking about. It's not hexagonal, this isn't. And, and quartz is cold and hard and heavy. This is light and warm. 
and it is 10 on the Mohs scale of hardness, and I know that. I know that. Because it'll scratch this ruby. This is a 2,270 carat pigeon blood ruby. It's a nice little rock, one of my uh, collection. And so I'm going to scratch it on the back. I don't want to do it on the front. But I don't mind doing it on the back of this thing because I can repolish this real easy. Uh, and so I'm going to go whoop. And uh, where'd my scratch go? There's my other one, my old one, I think. Let's make a nice scratch. There it is. There it still is. This is nine on the Mohs scale of hardness. The Mohs scale of hardness is a, uh, a, a scale that was developed about 250 years ago. People figured out that one mineral is harder than another mineral in, a, in an organized way. Um, and this stuff here, aluminum oxide, ruby, is um, the second hardest mineral in the world. Natural mineral. Okay, I, I'm not talking about man-made shit for anybody that wants to say natty, natty, natty. You know what, man? I'm talking about things I go and dig up out of the ground, okay? Uh, and I do. I dig up diamonds out of the Gila River. And I know that there's aluminum oxide there, too, because it comes from volcanic ash, and that's what I'm mining, is volcanic ash. And it makes diamonds and quartz and opal. When it to metamorphoses under great pressure. Okay? So this formed under great pressure. I, I believe that it came from um, calcite, calcium carbonate, uh, and the, the calcium is a light metal, and it reacts out as the temperature goes up and, and pressure goes up. And, and it, it doesn't exist in high-pressure zones because it's, it's already reacted with other things. Uh, that's what light metals do. Um, and the the so the volcanic ash that um, that we have here in Arizona um, in the Gila River is is uh, that's a fault line that's created by tectonic forces. So it has a tremendous amount of pressure, way more than a kimberlite pipe does. Um, and it, and it has it for for extended periods of time. It still has it. I cross the river every day. I live on the Gila River. That fault line is part of the living earth. It has the pressure that created this diamond in it right now, today, right now, this very minute. And under the, the earth, 
when when the the this part of the North American continent um, was somewhat older before the the this part of the planet settled down, um, and, and and that was a long time, right? The planet's been stable about one point five billion years, but there was about three point five billion years of uh, motion and movement before life happened on planet Earth. There, there was no life other than, than a few mm, single-cell animals in the water. Uh, but the, the, the tectonic processes and the, the geological processes are what created the, the substrate of minerals uh, in our soil. Uh, and that that happened in a period uh, of when our planet had been first formed, and um, and as it settled down, um, and during that time, the state of Arizona, where I live was under what is now the state of California, under the, the Pacific Plate. And, and there is, in fact, part of the North American Plate under the Pacific Plate, even as we speak. Uh, they, the Pacific Plate rides up over the North American Plate. And you can see that in Baja, California. Okay? That's kind of the... Uh, where it's riding up in California and, and those fault lines that we associate with the, the earthquakes in California are uh, part of this tectonic process. And they're, they're actually the, the Pacific plate. And we over here on the, on the east side of the uh, Colorado River are the North American plate. And these guys uh, uh, took a trip underneath the, the Pacific plate. And that pressure, that tremendous pressure, as that plate moved, and, and the plates are moving against each other, so the, the Pacific plate's going north and the North American plate's going south, and they move against each other, and, you know, the rock is on top of other rock, right? And, and they're moving at a rate that, that is measured in millimeters, about the size of that small facet right there, right in the middle of my thumb. This small facet is about a millimeter across. And I've got it magnified almost 10 times. And, and the plates move about that far. Uh, you can see right down inside that crystal. Right along that, that little tiny facet. And because that's so clear, light passes through it, and you can't even see the surface unless I turn it sideways. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Uh oh, isn't that cool, man? Diamonds are so clear because they've been smooshed together. And so this guy took a trip. And that tremendous pressure is what this formed under. And this, this was a, a piece of calcite. When, when volcanic ash happens, right, it blows out of the, uh, in, in this case, it's uh, 
uh, a caldera where the the crack just kind of leaks volcanic stuff until the it fills up with volcanic ash and stops flowing. Um, and volcanic ash carries uh, original material. It, it, it started out as a molten stuff way, way, way deep in the earth. And um, the, that ash is... Uh, um, comes up that fault line. Comes up that fault line to the surface from from the from the molten mantle, okay, like a volcano. Uh, but it slows rather than blows, okay, uh, because uh, we have rhyolite here. Rhyolite is the the high silica end. And uh, so we have rhyolite flows here in the southwest. And the, the Gila River is a series of those. And it, it's a, a big crack in the ground. Right? Big, huge crack in the ground. Drains the entire southwest United States. And it makes diamonds. <laughs> it makes diamonds. How about that?